Alright, so to get us going, I'm going to do some node, node strokes. Not super important we worry about what the nodes are, but it is. Um, it is important we understand that quadratics, a few things about quadratics, they come in. What's their general shape? What's a quadratic? How do we know if we see a quadratic versus a linear equation or a x squared? No, yeah. So in an equation, they come in the form. We're looking for something with an x squared plus x or b x plus. Yep. Okay. So it can come in that form. Does it have to have all of those terms? No. What must it have though to be a quadratic? X squared. So it's got to have the something to do with an x squared. How will we know, if I, if I draw a graph, how do you know it's a quadratic, not a linear function or a cubic or whatever? Yeah, so I should take that parabola form, or as the more scientific people in the room call it, a smiley face and a sad face, okay? So, we know that it comes in the form of a smiley face or a sad face, boys, you don't need your laptops yet, just paying attention. So, we're gonna look today at, we're gonna start with two forms of the quadratic. We've actually seen the third form that we're not gonna look at. So, now the first form of the quadratic is turning point form. Now we can convert these between each other, but this is just how we see the formula written out. I want you to have a crack at writing what you think this form might look like. A quadratic is turning point form. You have seen it before. I know you don't believe me, but you have seen it before. So it's a vertical? Yeah. 
at the turning point, very good. What value am I writing? Both values for the turning point? Or just one of them? Just one? Which one? X equals H. Because that is my H value correct. That tells me where my X is. And the symmetry occurs only with the X value. Cool? So very simply we can see by looking at this form where its turning point is and where the axis of symmetry is. Really nice. Who's dealt with that before? Good. What does the A value do? Determines if sad or happy. What else does it do? In pretty technical terms, getting thrown around. Yeah, dilation, which again the scientific community would call stretching up or down. Sweet. That's the light of your understanding being blown apart. Are we good with turning point form? Our next form, and again these are the same thing, but our next form is called intercept. Intercept form.
be next to it. Yeah. No, maybe plus or minus inside. Plus, plus or minus is one of them. Plus. Plus? Yeah. Who thinks it's plus B? You want to rethink your answer? Or are you happy with it? Okay, you know me. Do you think you want job description teaching as part of it? Why is it minus B, not plus B? We'll find out in a second. We'll find out in a second, alright? Stay tuned for next week's episode of why it's minus, not plus. What do you reckon goes after that, Melissa? Yep. Very good. You are right. So the X intercepts occur at. Right? X equals What do you reckon? What what's an X intercept? When does that occur? When what happens? Y equals zero, correct? Yeah. So how do we make this equal zero? Is A zero? Yeah. A can't be zero. A times something times something. How do we make that equal zero? Either the first something equals or the second something equals zero. When does this equal zero? When X equals? Negative B. Not negative B. It's positive B. Which is why it needed to be minus B. Cool? What about this one? When will it equal zero? When x equals? C. Very good. Now the axis of symmetry, when does it occur? When x equals b plus c divided by 2. What's that mean? X minus c. Yeah, great. That means something to a year 7 kid. You're explaining this to a year seven kid. Let's give a little diagram. Intercept one, intercept two. Where does my axis of symmetry occur? In the middle. Halfway between the two intercepts. So all we're doing is basically saying it's half of between B and C. We're taking the average of their values. Sweet. Now the axis of symmetry was their turning point, correct? So H simply equals B plus C divided by 2. What about K? How do I find K? Is there any shortcut? Or not? What do I have to do? Substitute. So I have to let x equal to find k. Let x equal h and sub into equation. There is no shortcut. Cool. Happy with that? So it's really important we understand these different forms because they have their value. When would I prefer to use turning point form? Pretty crazy, but when I have a, geez, they're good. When would I prefer to use intercept form? They're very good. Sweet. Happy with that? So what you need to be able to do is to determine a graph. So I might give you a graph and say determine the function of that graph. If you're given intercepts, you should use intercept form. If you're given a turning point, you should use turning point form. Happy with that? Yep. Awesome. How many other points do we need? Can I get by with just my intercepts? Or do I need more points? How many more points? One. Why do I need one more point? I need to find out what value. So if I've got my intercepts, I know my B and I know my C, but what value don't I know? A. That's why I need another point to find my A value. Same as my turning point form. If I've been given my HK, is that enough? 
I need my another point so I can find my A value. How would I find my A value? What does the other point give me? The other point gives me an X and a Y. So I sub those values in for X and Y. I know my H and my K. How many things don't I know? One. So I can just solve. Cool. Happy with that? All right, good. We've got some education perfect. I want you to sign on to education perfect and then we'll go through.